Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Yolanda Melody. In this video, I will be talking about brainwashing and mind control techniques. These techniques are typically used by cult leaders. However, every single one of these techniques can also be adopted by deceptive individuals. I believe that this subject is incredibly important and that everybody needs to know this information. Throughout my life, I have encountered so many situations where an individual has tried to manipulate me on a personal level and through mainstream media and even on YouTube. And although this video will be mainly focused on cults, I really want you to keep your mind open as to what a cult actually is. Most people, when they envisage cults, they have this idea that a cult is maybe a small group of people that go to secret meetings, they all wear cloaks and do various types of rituals. And most people would presume that groups like this are very few and far between. You don't come across these people in day-to-day -day life. But what I'm gonna show you in this video is that there are so many different types of cults. They come in all different shapes and sizes. And some of the most dangerous cults actually look like regular people. There is no typical one size fits all look for a cult. A lot of cults that I know of don't even have a quote unquote religious affiliation. In fact, some of the worst cults claim to be atheistic. And when you break it down, the core aspect of a cult is all based around mind control and manipulation. So today I'm going to share with you 23 mind control and brainwashing techniques pulled from an article that, according to my source, is no longer available on the internet. This article goes in depth and also discusses hypnosis. And because of the length of this article and the amount of information that I'm about to give, I'm gonna have to split this video into two parts. So let's just get into it. So it says here, below is a list of the usual brainwashing mind control techniques used in schools, hospitals, army, religious cults, totalitarian states, with political prisoners and descendants, mentally insane, some versions of psychotherapy, etc, etc. Indoctrination is a more slight and more subliminal form of brainwashing, e.g. commercials. However, these concepts are nothing short of controversial and open to various interpretations, which should be kept in mind while pursuing the web sources below. This person has also given a disclaimer that reads, I can't guarantee the information found from some of these pages is totally unprejudiced or scientifically verifiable. So it's up to you to decide whether to believe them or not. Between me and you, I have read this article fully and I found this to be the most useful, informative article that outlines all of these techniques. I've wanted to talk about cult indoctrination for a long time and I've been holding myself back because I wanted to make a brilliant video, almost like a reference point for everybody to be able to clearly see all of these techniques and understand them. So anyway, one of the first techniques and one of the most common is hypnosis. Again, hypnosis is something that is commonly misunderstood. Most people believe that hypnosis is a party trick typically done by a hypnotist. People might have visions of Darren Brown, which is a very extreme theatrical version of hypnosis. However, I am of the belief that in most mainstream media, for example, hypnosis techniques are used. The subconscious mind is a lot more susceptible than we think, and there are a lot of subtle things that you can do to entice a person into a trance. The definition of hypnosis is inducing a high state of suggestibility often thinly disguised as relaxation or meditation. Some examples are split into sections. The first section is repetitive music, most likely with a beat close to the human heart, 45 to 72 beats per minute. Most likely used during study sessions, as the teacher will say the music helps you relax and concentrate better. 
Number two, voice roll. A voice roll is a patterned, paced style used by hypnotists when inducing a trance. It's also used by many lawyers, several of whom are highly trained hypnotists. Interesting. The reason for this is that they desire to entrench a point firmly into the minds of jurors. A voice roll can sound as if the speaker were talking to the beat of a metronome, or it may sound as though he were emphasising every word in a monotonous pattern style. The words will usually be delivered at the rate of 45 to 60 beats per minute, maximising the hypnotic effect. The next point is the feel of the room. The way a room feels is essential to hypnotising unknowing subjects. It needs special lighting. Fluorescent lights are best because they aren't too dim, but aren't too harsh. Also, room temperature helps a bit, usually a little cooler than normal room temperature. You need to have the unknowing subjects very relaxed, perhaps even close to falling asleep. What I want you to bear in mind is that although I am discussing 23 different techniques, a cult does not need to adopt all of these techniques in order to be successful. In my personal opinion, if you witness even one of these techniques being used, it should raise a red flag. However, I'm always encouraging people to use their discernment. For example, a lot of people would think I am kind of on the paranoid side, but personally I think it's better safe than sorry. The next point is a very, very big one. Group peer pressure. Suppressing doubt and resistance to new ideas by exploiting the need to belong. Okay, so this is where my suspicions broaden because there are so, so many groups that do this that aren't typically classed as a cult, but this is actually one of the number one signs in my opinion. If you are part of an organisation, part of a group that is shunning you for questioning things, that's a big red flag. Also, one of the biggest wants and needs for a human is the need to belong to something. We are social creatures at the end of the day. Love bombing. <laughs> Now, if you have done research about narcissism or you have experience with a narcissist, this is a common manipulation technique and is usually done in the early stages. I'll give you an example. Typically, when a narcissist wants to entice a new partner, they will shower them with love, affection, compliments, almost to the point where you think, wow, this is this is so abnormal, like nobody, nobody I've ever met has treated me with such unconditional love right from the get-go. A narcissistic partner will probably book holidays, buy you gifts, say that they love you too quickly, give you endless levels of attention. And if it's a group setting, you might hear phrases like, we're all family, you're part of the family and they've only just met you. It says here that with love bombing, it's all about creating a sense of family through physical touch, thought, and feeling sharing and emotional bonding. Number four is rejection of old values. Accelerating acceptance of new lifestyle by constantly denouncing former beliefs and values. Number five, confusing doctrine. Encouraging blind acceptance and rejection of logic through complex lectures on an incomprehensible doctrine. When cults do this, it creates a dichotomy within someone's mind. I suppose you could put this down to a form of gaslighting, which is another technique, very common technique. <laughs> Often a cult will give you one belief system and then another one that contradicts that one. What this does is it causes a lot of confusion within the mind. Our mind wants to make sense of things, it wants to be logical, whereas the cult leader is surreptitiously bending your sense of reality. And a lot of people get to the point where because they can't understand the contradictions, they just blindly accept that the cult leader is more intelligent than them and the cult leader knows best. 
Also, side note, a cult doesn't necessarily need to have one individual leader. It can sometimes be an ideology on a grand scale with multiple spokespeople. Next one is meta communication. Meta. <laughs> Implanting subliminal messages by stressing certain key words or phrases in long and confusing lectures. Now I could think of a lot of examples of companies and groups that use slogans and phrases. In fact, that is a part of branding, which again, broadens your view as to what a cult actually is. Removal of privacy. Achieving loss of ability to evaluate logically by preventing private contemplation. When I read this, it rang so true because in my personal life, I need my own alone time to contemplate and to think on my own away from any outside influences. As humans, we like to believe that we are more resilient than we actually are. You wouldn't want to believe that you could be so heavily influenced by something if you were surrounded by it all the time, constantly. But I've witnessed it with myself I will own up and say that. When you see the madness of some people and some groups, it does make you wonder how they ever got there. The reason being is that you become like the five people that you surround yourself with, or so they say. Now imagine if you're in an environment full of people with this insane ideology and they're constantly reaffirming these messages to you, eventually your brain will go down the path of least resistance their messed up ideology will start to make sense to you. Okay, I'm gonna try and stop elaborating on every point <laughs> because we have so many to get through. Anyway, disinhibition. Encouraging childlike obedience by orchestrating childlike behavior. This is an interesting one to ponder. Okay, the next one is uncompromising rules. Inducing regression and disorientation by soliciting agreement to seemingly simple rules which regulate meal times, bathroom breaks, and use of medications. This kind of sounds a bit like school. <laughs> Number 10 is verbal abuse. Desensitizing through bombardment with foul and abusive language. And in brackets it says, physical abuse such as torture is the more extreme form of this. Now this is where I say not every cult uses all of these tactics because in my opinion, this is an extreme case. I can think of a lot of cults or people that adopt cult-like behavior where this is not applicable. Although again, if you compare this to a narcissistic relationship, this is a common one. And in case I haven't made it obvious enough, I believe that cults and narcissism go hand in hand. I believe that all cult leaders or majority of them are narcissists because only a narcissist would want to achieve this level of control over a bunch of people in a negative way and cause harm to people through manipulation. Okay, another one is sleep deprivation and fatigue. Creating disorientation and vulnerability by prolonging mental and physical activity and withholding adequate rest and sleep. Now this one may be hard to spot because say for example, you went to a retreat or a spiritual retreat. Let's use that example. And every single day is packed with activities. The whole itinerary is chock-a-block with loads and loads of fun things to do. Most people would not suspect that this was actually done deliberately to lower people's inhibitions because when people are sleep deprived, they are probably at their most vulnerable. Again, this can also be done by narcissists to their partner. Dress codes, removing individuality by demanding conformity to the group dress code. This is where people get the idea of a cult where they all wear white robes and cloaks. <laughs> but when I think of this, again, I think of workplaces and school. <laughs> and just a side note, I, <laughs> 
My biggest problem whenever I have been in school or in a workplace is the whole thing of uniform. I cannot stand uniform. I have always kicked up such a fuss and it has always been revolved around the idea of uniform. I just think <sighs> it's just always been the most triggering thing for me. I express my individuality through my looks and through many other things but in my personal opinion there is absolutely no need for everybody to wear the same clothes. Who is it benefiting? Next one, chanting and singing. Eliminating non-cult ideas through group repetition or mind-narrowing chants or phrases. Again, I have heard this happen in workplaces. Say for example, at my old workplace, we had a company that took over the hospitality section of our workplace. And there was some form of staff training day and we were all told right at the beginning to stand up and to clap and do this weird, monotonous, childlike chanting about the company. And again, this happened in school many times and I just thought it was really cringe. But there are also very big organisations that are supposed to be very sensible and you just wouldn't expect them to make their employees clap and sing a really cringy song. It, it's not even a song really. <laughs> it's just like, we are so and so. We are this company. <laughs> Mozzarella pizza. Comment down below if you have ever experienced this because I know people, everyone I know has a story about this with a workplace. You have to think, what is the purpose of this? There is no two ways about it. That is a form of brainwashing. Number 14 is confession. Encouraging the destruction of individual ego through confession of personal weakness and innermost feelings of doubt. This is gonna be controversial if you are part of the spiritual community. I have done a whole video about the whole idea of an ego death. I actually went through a phase where I was watching multiple spiritual teachers who did a number of exercises promoting the loss of the ego. There are so many people in the spiritual community that demonize the ego, which is your sense of self and your individuality. They say that the ego is getting in the way of your enlightenment. Now I did an exercise a few years ago where I wanted to invoke an ego death and I began acting very, very strange to say the least. But I won't go into the story because I already have done a video about it. If someone is encouraging you to drop your ego, as in remove it altogether and to become one with the group, they are trying to remove your sense of discernment. They're trying to break down your sense of self because the more that that is broken down, the easier you are to be reprogrammed mentally. What they want ideally is for your mind to be a blank canvas and a sponge for their information and their ideology to be implanted. Okay, I'm going to end this video now. So we got to number 14. Stay tuned for next week's video where I will be discussing all of the further techniques of mind control. And by the time that this video is up, I will be putting the link in the description box. So keep an eye out for that. Also make sure you subscribe <laughs> so that you don't miss that video. If you enjoyed part one, please make sure to drop me a like subscribe and hit the notification bell <laughs> and I will see you very soon. Love you, bye!